Get up, boys, child! Get up! I think Odin's sick, Sensei. Me dummy hurts. So hungry. You always hungry. Odin fatty, that why. <sighs> Kids. That not nice. Take back. Why? It true. Huh? Just like you, grumpy Moa. Maybe I'm just hungry too. Eat you, finger. Maybe you try. Enough. Save this energy for when we get to sparring part of your training. Today's all about basic forms, nothing else. Now get back in formation. Ye, help your brother up. Come on, Odin. Time for Tai Chi. Oh, tai Chi too hard. Not hard for me, fatty. Take back! Ugh. Knock it off! Well, I say this is a good time for a timeout. Mom? Grammy April? How long were you there? Long enough to see some little turtles being mean to each other. Moa, I know you are sticking up for your other brother, but violence is never the right solution, young lady. And Uno? Nobody likes to show off. Sorry, Grandma. Mm. Now, why don't you kids go take a break so your sensei and I can have a little talk, hmm? I do Tai Chi alone, then. Whatever. Me so hungry. I know, baby. Grammy will make you a yummy sandwich when she is done in here, okay? With cross cut off. You know it. Grammy, can I help you fix things in the garage? You bet, kiddo. Go away from me there. Just don't touch anything you're not supposed to. I won't promise. You know she's gonna mess with everything in there, right, Mom? Yup. Reminds me of another little busybody who used to run amok in this place. Except you were always better at breaking things than fixing them. Oh, I can't fix these kids. That's for sure. What's the fix, Casey? They're just babies. Babies who I'm supposed to turn into ninjas. Which I totally suck at, apparently. When did training them to be ninjas become monetary? I seem to recall you making that decision all on your own, kid. For them, and for you. I... Yeah, I know. But it's the right thing, isn't it? I mean... With everything happening in the city ever since Sensei... Well... You know... Casey, I know you're trying so hard to follow in Michelangelo's footsteps. And I guarantee you, wherever he is now, he's very proud of you. But we both know that his dying wish wasn't about fighting. It was about knowing peace. Except the fighting didn't stop. Which means... Which means, it's all the more reason we should be taking Mikey's advice. I'm not gonna lie, Case. We still got problems. Even with the Foot Clan gone, Donatello once told me that nature abhors a vacuum, and that's providing true with the new power struggle in the city. But Donnie also taught me the scientific method. To find a problem, gather info, postulate a solution, test, look for success, and admit failures. Start over if necessary. There were plenty of times when I didn't think I had what it took to be a good mom to you. But then, I remember what, what Donnie showed me, and I always found a way to make it work. You just got to take baby steps at start. Especially with babies. Yeah. I guess so. I bet Master Splinter's old journal says something about failure, huh? Yeah. It says to be is the only real you let it be real.
years since I felt everything. And now pain, violence and absolute, flooding my senses, my entire being, mind, body, soul. The pain reminds me that I had to come here to die, and I welcomed it. My father, our friends too, April O'Neil, Casey Jones, the Fugitoid, all victims of an ancient family feud, Oroku versus Amato, all dead, except for me. So with nothing left to live for, I just started walking up this cold and unforgiving mountain to meet my end. And I thought I found what I was looking for. A place to stop. To let go. <clears throat> to lie down. To die. I was wrong. Freezing temperatures water and no food for who knows how long and still my mean body wouldn't let my spirit go neither with a voice that was suddenly whispering inside of my head this is not your destiny when spring finally arrived I figured I wasn't going to die I better get busy surviving. And it seemed like the universe agreed. The lost and lonely place I'd chosen to fall began to lift me up, providing me the sustenance I needed to live. And the solitude necessary for me to search deep inside myself for answers. Any answers. For three years I meditated and relentlessly studied my father's journal, seeking balance in his words pictures and after a time it felt like merely surviving had become actually living and that I just might find the final peace I hoped for but as unexpectedly as it had to come that time passed monster kill it they charged at me like rabid dogs practically frothing at the mouth in their mad rush to Kill me. And unlike my attackers, I was in no hurry to stop them. Instead, I woke up the pain. Got the deck to come. And I imagine what would my family say if they were here? <laughs> Donnie would say something about the irony of these feral beasts calling me a monster. <laughs> Leo would criticize the sloppiness of their attack. Ah! Raph would probably just say something tough like, That all you got, punks? And Father? What would Father say? Get up, foolish child! What? Father? I said get up! Your brothers have nearly broken through the last line of the Foot Clan defenders! Mokosaki's head and vengeance will soon belong to the Mato Clan. This is what I trade you for all your life! This moment! Get up and rejoin the fight, Michelangelo! I... I can't, Father! <laughs> Hear me, boy! This is not your destiny. I will not leave you here to meet a coward's end. Coward? I'm no coward.
coward. This is not my destiny. Why won't this thing die? I already told you, it's a monster. Yeah, well, I got something to put it out of its misery. Turtle suit tonight, man. That's why right, chop it up. Time to get up. Huh? No respect for life. No water. No mercy. Years of rage. Holiness. Grief. Guilt. They let it all out. They never have a chance. And then, it's done. The fatigue sets in from the battle for my wife. My wife. This is not your destiny. My life was set for me from birth. <sighs> Respect. Honor, redemption, family. Master Splinter was right. This mountain sanctuary with its false promises of peace and resolution was never my destiny. No more than fooling myself that I could quit my family's long war against the Foot Clan ever was. Redemption for my family on the battlefield. That's my destiny. To the end. What the? How? I passed this village when I first arrived at the mountains three years ago. There were farmers and shepherds and their families. Peaceful, hard workers doing what they had to do to survive. The village almost seemed ancient when I first saw it. The place lost its time. A sacred place. Who do something like this? There he is! Huh? That's the monster who attacked us in the hills! Attack you! Just like on the mountains, my rage overtook me. I strike without thinking. But this time, there's something different. I'm mad. Yeah, really mad. But at the same time, there's a calmness to my family. This, blades, bullets. I see everything. They throw my way really. Almost as if they battle a movement in slow motion. I can even see that they all wear the same tattoo as the ones I fought for. <laughs> but these guys are bigger, stronger, better armed, and better trained. <laughs> After three years of only meditating, reading, and gardening, I'm nowhere close to being in true fighting shape. <laughs> my legs burn. My muscles ache. My heart races. I wonder if two battles in one day might be too much for me to handle. But then I remember dead villagers. Innocent victims of these thugs. <laughs> these cowards. And I find the second win I need to end their pathetic existence. Please, don't hurt me. Don't. There. Now I attach you. You. You should go now, warrior. Before he returns. Whoa, whoa, sir. I've got you. Go now. Save yourself. He will. 
return when his soldiers do not join him? Who? Who will return? he did to your village, there is no way I... No. This village is... lost. Nothing left to fight for. Leave. Now. What you can. You will not survive if you dare face Death Worm's army. Boom. Father! I I'm sorry! Michelangelo, you... I just can't do this anymore! My son, you are not doing this. We are. Your brothers, you, me. We fight this war together. Always. Alone. So what's it gonna be, Chucklehead? You just gonna sit there and cry him like a baby? Or you gonna do what the old man told you? And get moving. He must be confused. Oh no! I dropped my water! Sensei's gonna be so mad! Cause you're supposed to be mopping, Odin, not drinking. I know, ye. But Sujinga makes me thirsty. Soja do, dude. You can't get anything right. That's not true. I get lots of things right, oh no! Yeah? Like what? Hey, Case. What you doing? Hey, Mom. Nothing, just watching the kids clean the dojo. Again? <laughs> yeah. I want to see how they handle it. I... I don't know everything I do, oh no! I just know I do lots of things right! Can you help me, Yi? For Sensei comes back. Nah. Sensei said my job is only wipe things down. So I can only wipe things down. Moa? Hey, Moa! Nope. But Sensei Casey said we have to fix our own messes. Ah. Oh no! No way, dude! Alright. What's going on in here? Crybaby Odin broke another glass! I... I'm sorry, Sensei! Are you... really mad? No, I'm not mad. But I do want to talk about... It. everybody on me. Lesson time. I made the table super clean, Grammy April! I see that, kiddo. Nice work. Come on, Moa. Sensei wants us. What? Okay, listen up. I'm going to tell you all a story Grammy April told me once. About my dad and the Ninja Turtles. Master Splinter has sent them all on an important mission to stop the Foot Clan from stealing stuff that didn't belong to them. Like always... Leonardo was in charge, and just when he was going to give the orders to grab the bad guys, my dad saw something else happening. Some other bad guys getting ready to be mean to a poor lady. He wanted to go help the lady. At first, the turtles didn't want to go with my dad, because they were supposed to be stopping the Foot Clan, like Master Splinter said. 
but my dad didn't listen to them. He went anyway. And even though they would mess it up for their mission against the foot, the turtles followed. They helped my dad stop the mean guys and save the poor lady. Because it was the right thing to do. I think about that story a lot. In the time I helped Grammy stop the city from flooding, when what I really wanted to do was help my sensei fight the foot. It's just... Sometimes we get so caught up in what we think we're supposed to be doing. Or... What we'll be doing. That we ignore what we should be doing. Like helping out one of our teammates when they're in trouble. Wow! Grandpa Casey and the Turtles were so cool! Don't you miss them, Grammy April? I do miss them, Yi. So much. But sometimes... It's just like they're still here. This is not good. What the hell is it? And bad as my Korean is, it's not so hard to figure out what's being said because I've heard it all before. I'll tell you what it is. Let me guess. It's dead. Kill the monster. I'm totally exposed. And I've only got myself to blame. Weeks of hiding in plain sight, in this dump without any issues. And I blow my cover in the petty barroom wall. Stop that thing, Main Road! Stupid, Mike. Real stupid. Come on, freak. Let's finish this. So much for quick and quiet. It's been three years since the dying old man in the burning village in Hakuto told me to run away from a psychopath called Deathworm and his army of thugs. Three years since the ghost of my brother suddenly showed up out of nowhere telling me the same thing. So what's it gonna be, Chucklehead? You're just gonna sit there crying like a baby? Or you're gonna do what the old man told you? And get moving? Yeah, I know. Crazy. Maybe I just took too many knocks on my skull. Wherever it was, this sandy or a concussion, I wasn't stupid enough to believe I was in any shape to take on another fight right then. So, with no real plan other than getting the hell out of Dodge, I just started heading south toward the Japanese mainland. With only one thought, Helping me ease my guilt from running away. Live to fight another day. Little did I know, another day would turn into days, then months, then years of running. At first, I kept to the woods and forests as much as possible, foraging for mushrooms and wild plants to survive. My brother Donatello told me what was safe to eat and what was poisonous. He called it Sasai, the ancient practice of a wild plant picking. Or maybe I just knew what to pick and what to eat after the years I spent surviving in the mountains. The constant jabbering of my dead companions was making it hard to separate past from present, reality from delusion. And whether I was crazy or concussed, it didn't seem like they were hurrying to go away, and lonely as I was. I wasn't in any hurry to let them go. Eventually, I made it to the south edge of Hakuto. Behind me were three years of isolation, piles of dead bodies, and a psycho and his thug army, most likely after my head. Ahead of me was the Sea of Japan, and... Beyond that, the mainland. And beyond that, a dark reckoning. So without looking back, I just started swimming. 
Once I got to the mainland, I continued south using the western coastline as my compass. I slept during the day and hiked at night, keeping a low profile and staying out of sight. It was a long, slow trek, and I still wasn't sure exactly where I was going, much to the frustration of my traveling partners. They started nagging me constantly about not having a kind of solid plan, doing everything they could to push my buttons. But I was way too tired to argue. By the time I reached the Monument of Remembrance in Akita, they finally had enough. Sun setting. You know what that means? Yeah. Another stinking night of pointless walking. It doesn't have to be pointless. There's been no signs of death worm or his goons since we left Akito. Either if we lost him, or they don't care about us anymore. So if we're not running from them, what exactly are we doing, Mikey? Wait. Did you just say we? We aren't doing anything, Leo. I'm getting ready to head further south as soon as the sun is all the way down. You three are dead. So, what's the guy do with you? Hiking your sorry butt all the way to Japan like a chicken with his head cut off? It's everything to do with everything, Raph. I'm here because you couldn't keep your sigh in your pants when Karai ambushed us all the way back then. I'm here because you started the war that killed everyone I cared about. Everyone that ever mattered to me. Including you. You stupid jerk. Yeah, well, maybe I did make a mistake after that ambush. No maybes about it, Raph. Whatever, Don. And maybe that mistake started things rolling downhill for us. But we all knew it was coming one way or another. Us against the Foot Clan, just like Master Splinter always did. It was eventually going to be the last man standing no matter what, or last mutant standing. You're right, Mikey. We're dead, but you're not. And neither is... Haruto. Yeah, he's the last of his family. You're the last of ours, which means... You're the only one of us left who can finish what Raph started when he went after Karai. Hey, hey, come on, guys. Give me a break. Karai started and when she broke the stinking truce. No. We all knew this started way before you fought with Karai. Way before the truce. Way before any of us were even born. This started with Father and Shredder. And it ends with Haruto and me. So, what you're saying? I'm saying I know where I'm going now. Maybe deep down, I always knew. New York City. To stand or fall. Now you're talking. Am I? It's getting hard to tell. So we, I, finally had a plan. Vengeance for my family awaited for me in New York City in the form of Oroku Haruto, current master of the Foot Clan, grandson, and last living heir of the Haruku Saki, the Shredder, and the son of Haruku Karai. As for my brothers, it was business as usual. Talk, talk, talk. Raph, Moaning and groaning about the long hike, Donnie proposing we jump aboard on a train on the nearby tracks. Leo reminding me how rusty my fighting skills have become and suggesting that we stop at a sacred Hamato clan elite training camp on the island of Jiboyama. My father had written about it in his journal. Yup, business as usual. So that night, with Rav constant complaints, Donnie's solution, and Leo's destination in mind, I hopped on the southbound train, 
near Amano River. Next stop, once I made it to Port City, I could firmly watch his passengers board a cruise ferry bound for Russia via Korea. And when the time was right, I boarded on too. After nearly a year of sleeping only in the daytime, I was wide awake all night long and figured I'd head to the main deck and get some peace and quiet before the other passengers woke up. Beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, it is. I should have known better. Who the hell are you talking to, huh? Crap. Hey, Loon, my friend asked you a question. Bro, look what we got here. Ain't that the green freak the boss been looking for? How many green freaks you think there are, huh? Don't know. We're just gonna have to take the ugly head to Korea with us in the box. Boss loved the gift if we're right. Yeah. Might even give us some promotions. <laughs> yeah. The tattoo on the drunk aide's chest wasn't just a handy bullseye. <laughs> it let me know who their boss was too. <laughs> Death War. I thought I'd put the mess in the book beside us. Guess not. <laughs> Plan to make a watery detour before the boat got to Korea, so there was no point delaying the inevitable any longer. Man, talk about stomping on some cockroaches. Yeah, and whenever you see cockroaches, there is bound to be more. And I wasn't about to wait around and find out if there were more of Death Worm's thugs on the ship. So much for peace, so much for quiet. To swim to Jabariani Island was way harder than I expected. It was a miracle that I didn't drown. I didn't even remember the last part exhausted and delirious as I was. But I'll never forget the first thing I saw when I finally came to. What have we here, Moe? Such an expected prize the tide has sent our way. I should have brought a bigger net. Wake up, total man. Or your soup will become cold. Where? Where am I? Generally speaking, you are on Jaboyama Island. Specifically, my guest's hut. This fine lady is Nori, my chunyin, and a very good dog. <coughs> and I am Masiyeb of the Hamato clan, the elite sensei you seek. Wait, you? No offense, you're speaking Japanese, but you're... A Chinese man? I am that, and you are a turtle man. Clan Hamato is wonderfully diverse, is it not? I will be outside when you're ready, Michelangelo, to begin your training. We've much to do, you and I, and Nori, of course. Hold on. You speak English too? And you know my name and why I'm here? Yes. Well, You've been in and out of consciousness for nearly two days, young friend. Mumbling and moaning all the while. That's how I learned what you are called and what you are seeking. Now, please finish your soup. You must be famished. What does one call soup for a turtle boy? Ah, yes. Turtle soup. Wasn't the last bad joke I'd hear from the old master. What came next, though, was no joke. After a few days of soup and rest, I finally had the strength to step out of the hut. Where the old master.
master and his very junior were waiting to put me to work. Ah, so good to see you up and about, son of Splinter. Your training can now begin. <coughs> Sojido, the way of cleaning. The tradition of students cleaning the dojo together. The sign of respect and a way of giving thanks to your sensei. And since Master Yip considered the entire camp his dojo, and since I was the only student, you know, when you were saying you were gonna wipe the Foot Clan off the face of the earth, I got very familiar with the tradition. This ain't what I thought you meant. Heh, <laughs> me either. You missed a spot, Daniel son. Whatever, shut up. Turns out, the cleaning was just getting started. Master Yip also wanted me to cleanse me of old habits and old crutches, which meant weapons, one part of the early training. How can you master what you hold in your hands if you don't first master your hands? We started with the basic form of Wing Chun, which we called Sunamoto. As you English would say, the little idea for beginning, except I'm American. Which would you explain why you're talking instead of listening? Huh? Less yapping, more yipping. As our training continued, I began to question the softness of the forms. Master Yip explained that the hand to hand techniques. We constantly practice how many of the same benefits of Sojido. Both traditions slow you down, centering you in the present to better focus on your breathing and technique and the task at hand. <laughs> All jesting aside, do not mistake softness <laughs> for weakness. I didn't question him again. Eventually, we moved to weapons training. In Bachado, excellent footwork is crucial to success, as is a Saba understanding, like all weapons. The blades you hold in your hands are intended for deadly purposes. They are the Dit Mondo, life-taking knives, as the English would say. Yes, you Americans too. Days turned the months, training became routine, but never moved on. The lessons I was learning daily had me yearning for more. And I grew to understand why my father had written so highly in Master Yip in his journey. He really was an elite sensei. And even taught me a thing or two about puns. What did the Buddha say to the hot dog Fendor? Make me one with everything. <laughs> For more than a year and a half, I was always busy. Thanks for your soldier though, since it's Nori. And never alone. The new Ren Zane form is improving, Mikey. Not surprising. He's literally spent hundreds of hours all over that thing. Whatever. Shut up. Yeah, get a room already, dummy. And then, my training was complete. It was time for me to head west, to New York City in redemption. But Master Yip threw one last curveball my way before I left. You have told me of your past, of your family's tragedy, and your self goals inside Japan. Fight from the one cold death worm. And of your mission of vengeance against the Foot Clan. And as you spoke, I only listened. But now I must speak. When your father came to train with me, he too went for the burning desire for revenge against the enemies of your family. And like you, he made it his life's purpose to see through his quest for vengeance. 
with Sola. I trained him as I trained you, as I trained all of my students. In solitude, in quiet, sharing the techniques that instill self control and in accountability. win the battle you wage within yourself before embarking on bloody vendettas against others. And you, even more so than your father, have been victorious in this. And now, the time to seek justice for those you have lost has come. I will not deny you your quest, but I will present you a question before you depart. Can you honorably rush to face one enemy when you fearfully retreat from another? Deathworm. Yes, Deathworm. He must be confronted. In your heart, you know this. As I round away Master Yip's words burned inside my brain, it was more like a challenge than a question. Take down Deathworm first. Then go after a local Minuto. Don't pass go. Don't collect two hundred dollars. I have preferred another bad pun. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Seriously, Raph. Shut up. It was nighttime when I finally reached Dong Hai Se in South Korea. Correction. The Unified Korean Republic. I learned some important things over the next few days. First, it was cold as a mother, and I stuck out like a sore thumb, which I meant desperately needed some new clothes. I hated stealing, but I didn't want to get spotted. And I sure as hell didn't want to freeze to death. Second, before I can figure out the newspapers, there had been a massive earthquake in China. Why hold up in Hakio? Like 9.6 magnitude massive. The destruction took out a lot of China's nuclear facilities, turning most of the country into an irradiated wasteland. The Chinese government pretty much collapsed overnight, and any control they had over other nations was lost, starting with North Korea. South Korea quickly followed. But maybe the most important thing I learned was that Deathworm's thug army had been causing all kinds of problems up and down in the newly united country over the last year. According to the papers, he was the last seen in the former DMV. Man, do you realize how destructive a 9.6 magnitude quake is? No, but I bet you're gonna tell us, nerd. <clears throat> so that's where I headed. The town was named after the 38th Perel, and its steam stuck in a schizophrenic limbo. Somewhere between its Cold War past and the unified present. It was like a well-wit slum, shiny and new and old and the filthy all at once. It was hard to tell where the crime stopped in, where the law started, but it wasn't hard to see why it was called the Wild West of the East. Finding death from here wasn't gonna be easy, more like a crooked needle in a vice infested haystack, but at least I could blend in while I searched. Everybody minded their own damn business in Town 38. Which meant, finding Deathworm wasn't just hard, it was impossible. Either nobody knew where he was, or where they weren't about to tell me if they did. I searched high and low, but nothing. I slept in alleys, and ate from dumpsters, and after weeks of failure, I had enough. Deathworm was more than a ghost of my brothers. If they get some real food in me, I was gonna be one too. So, 
I sold half my warrior soul for a few cold bucks to buy a hot meal in a warm place where I could sit and think. Think about what the hell was I gonna do next? You made an oath to Master Yip. To beat Deathworm before you go after Oroko Haruto? Your honor bound, Mike. I disagree, Leo. I don't remember Mikey taking any official pledge. Seemed more like Master Yip was making a suggestion to me. Well, I suggest we pick one of them for a beatdown. Then we get to it. We... Shh. Quiet, Raph. Deathworm. Yes, Deathworm. He must be confronted. In your heart, you know this. I know. Nice tattoo. So tell me, where's Deathworm? Deathworm? What's that? Sounds like something more you get from eating bad Takachi. Who's asking? A green freak. You! I needed to take down the four idiots quickly. Quietly kill you? I want answers. Not attention. Unfortunately, my new friends weren't cooperating. Not bastard at all. Which brings us to now. Come on! So much for quick and quiet. But I still need answers. And if this punk doesn't help me the easy way, then there's a hard way. That's what you tell me. That will just fine. Okay, pal. Either you give me some intel, or I take out your eyes. Where's Deathworm? Mon Mongolia. Good boy. And huh. goodbye. So that's it. Then drop smoke. Grab your gear. Borrow an old wreck. Head north to Mongolia without a plan, but there is a plan. Find Deathworm, take him down, and then go after Aruto. You said yourself, Leo. I took an oath with Master Yib. I'm honor bound. Yeah, Leo, quit complaining. That DMV dumpster diving life was getting old. Well, I still agree that the no oath was officially taken. But whatever. All cinematics aside, I just hope we make it there in one piece. Because we all know Mikey sucks at driving. Starving Grammy, eh, bro? I can see that, Odin. You're practically wasting away. As soon as I got these crusts cut off, you can take this over to the table with your brother and sisters. Just in the nick of time to save you from completely disappearing, baby. Thanks, Grammy. Oh, brother. Zip it, Ono. And how many times I gotta tell you kids, no electronics while you're eating. Hey, where's he? Grammy, I cut myself. Oh man, little girl. How'd you manage that? I was, I was trying to slice some wires in Grammy's garage, but I slipped in, and, and now I'm gonna die. Pretty sure you'll survive, kiddo. But you're lucky you didn't hurt yourself worse. Didn't we talk about you not messing with any of Grammy's tools unless I'm there to watch you? Yes, Grammy, I... I just thought I could do it by myself. To help you fix things. Well, 
can't criticize you for a lack of ambition, that's for sure. But as much as I love you talking initiative, I really need you to promise you'll wait for me next time, okay? Okay, Grammy April. I'm sorry. I know you are, honey. And now, you're all better. Why don't you join everyone at the table while I get some lunch? And I'll tell you all a story. You too, Sensei. One time, right after we lost poor Uncle Raph, there were some really bad guys called the Purple Dragons, causing some trouble in our neighborhood. Normally, the turtles and your grandpa Casey would have investigated them. But with everything that's happened to Raph, they were busy preparing to fight the Foot Clan. I've been in some scuffles before, but I've never done any of the ninja stuff with the guys up to the point. And I really wanted to help. So, I started spying on the Purple Dragons myself. The problem was, even if my intentions were good, I needed more training to be doing what I was doing on my own. got myself into serious trouble. What happened next, Grammy? Well, lucky for me, Moa, I wasn't alone. The guy showed up just in time to bail me out. And to teach me a very important lesson. That even though my heart was in the right place, my mind and my body weren't quite ready for the job. I still needed help. And you know what? That was perfectly okay. There's nothing wrong with trying to do things on your own. But it's easy to just get ahead yourself sometimes when you do. Especially if you rush in blindly. Whenever possible, first, get the help you need. And always look before you leap, okay? Okay, Grammy April. I will. Promise. Two years ago. What? What's happening to me? Why is everything so dark? That's when I lost my eyes. I. I can't see! But we can see you, creature. Prepare the ropes. I remember thinking that voice. Who? Who is it? Leo? Is that. Is that you? There is no Leo here, creature. There is only us. Us? Yes. And we ask that you do not struggle. We mean you no harm. For now. Wait. What? But until we know who and what you are, <laughs> we must proceed with caution. No! Wait! Don't! Ah! But rest assured, you will know who we are soon enough. Quickly, we wasted enough time already. No yawn awaits. No. No yawn. Yes, creature. Shomagon, no one. Our leader. He will decide what to do with you. What to do with me? I began to fade into black. Was I awake? Was I dreaming? Or was I remembering? <laughs> the Korean bar in town 38. I fought some of the death worm stucks there recently. One. And I learned where to find the boss. Mon Mongolia! I need a right quick to get out of Dodge and to get out to Death War. Good thing an old friend of mine taught me and my brothers how to borrow a car once upon a time. Casey Jones. I found a map in the Cars Club. 
books, got myself oriented, and decided to hang northwest from town 38 made the most sense. The route I paused and took me past Poyongyang, moving through China and Inner Mongolia, all to handle unfinished business with death warm in Mongolia. If I could find him. Talk about needle in the haystack mission. Yeah, and we're looking at a 30 hours plus haul before we even get there. The way Mikey drives, we'll be lucky to get there at all. Whatever. The trip was no joy ride. The further we pushed, the more but a shiny new reality sure did rise in its place. Heads up. Scavengers, three o'clock. And by the looks of them, I don't suggest we stop and say hi. You think? Apparently, unified doesn't equate to civilized. No matter how I added it up, I wasn't about to take any chances. I kept to the road, only pausing to give what I needed to keep going. Yo, was it just me? Is this freaking snow weird looking? We kept moving northwest, finally crossing the border. And if the former North Korea was scary, China was horrifying. Every town was the same. I read about the 9.6 magnitude earthquake that struck me in Beijing. The reports made it sound really bad. But seeing it with my own eyes, no words. Was too much. I had to get out of there. Uh, guys, I think I know why the snow's been so odd. I couldn't get to the inner Mongolia fast enough. I finally did get there, but instead of feeling relief, I felt sick. Whoa, Mikey, what the hell? Grab the wheel. Fortunate, we take you to Chomagon, no one a creature, for he sees all. Perhaps he will help you if you are worthy. Chomagon, no one is but all. We have returned from the south, we have not returned alone. Please. Visitor, tell me, what are you called, stranger? His voice, almost like father's, like a ghost speaking in the dark. Chumagon, no one asked you a question, creature. I, my name is Michelangelo. And what is it you seek in our lands, Michelangelo? I'm looking for someone. He's, he's called Deathworm. He's a bad guy, an enemy I sworn to defeat. I chased him across three countries. He's supposed to be in Mongolia, but now something's wrong. My eyes, I'm, I think I'm blind. Hmm. It appears we have similar concerns, we too. Deathworm? Yes. Much more. Please join me, and I will explain. <laughs> so, Blind Mikey found a tribe of Mongolian warriors in the middle of nowhere with a common enemy. What were the odds? Near impossible. About as believable as a martial arts B movie plot. But the tea in my hands was. 
in some rough handaway when they first grabbed me. My host seemed real and warm too. My father always talked about how fate and destiny play a huge part in everyone's lives. He even wrote about it in his journal. I was thinking that maybe that's what this was fate, destiny. It's all just plain luck. <laughs> I wish Master E had heard that one. Bad puns aside, I was feeling pretty damn helpless. Scared, even. I couldn't see it, but I felt my whole sense my anxiety, too. He spoke slowly, in comforting tones, sounding more like Master Splinter with every word. My name is Chomagon. My title is no one, which makes me the chief of both this Wada and a book. What the English call camp and tribe. And you have already become closely acquainted with my brave and loyal second, Latour Makator. Please accept my apologies the harsh treatment you received by my orders, Michelangelo. It was meant only as protection for us and for you. No worries. Can't blame you for being careful. Had to be shot to find someone like me. Ah, uh, yes. Someone like you. The evidence writers informed me an emerald beast man had been captured in the wastelands. And although I am unable to appreciate the colorful description I was given, I can certainly feel that you are, shall we say, quietly formed the result of radiation poisoning, perhaps? No, I've been this way all my life. I'm a mutant. Interesting. You said you can't appreciate my color. Are you... Are you blind too? That was the much more we had in common than I spoke of earlier. A fever when I was a younger man rendered me sightless, but not blind. Even without my eyes, I could see the noble warrior inside you, Michelangelo. And as the enemy of my enemy, is my friend. I would invite you to join us as one of our own, a good soldier and free man. Uh, free mutant. But my eyes, how? Do not fret about that. I will show you how. We have set aside a small yurt to accommodate you, Michelangelo. And you will have a helper at all times as well. Helper? Yes. She will assist you while you adjust to your new surroundings. And your new condition. But who? I gotta ask. How can your chief even think to invite me to join you guys? I mean, other than being me, being a blind mutant? What do any of you really know about me? You are right. We know very little about you. But it is, I told you before. Jamagon no one is able to see things the rest of us cannot. Here we are at your yacht, my friend. And young Jewel is here too, at your service. Please, read on a guest, Jiro, and practice your English. Hello, Beatles John Leon. Close enough. I will leave both of you now. Jewel, be sure Michelangelo is fed soon. Come, Michelangelo. We eat. And so we ate. The first of many meals with my new little helper, Jewel, and other members of the tribe. And even though. They will all became like family to me eventually. I didn't need walking 
the eyes to figure out they were sure about me joining them. At first, as the Nomion seemed to be. May I join you, friends? Lucky for me, the two wasn't an only a loyal soldier to his chief. He was also highly respected by the entire tribe. If he was willing to accept me, then so were they. Which made my own fears and uncertainties a lot easier to face. Good sleep to you, Michelangelo. Even in the permanent darkness. Of course, even in the dark. I was never totally alone. Well, this is something you don't see every day. That's supposed to be a joke, Leo, because I ain't laughing. Probably because sudden blindness isn't funny. If I had a guess, I'd say prolonged exposure to the radiation is to blame. Whatever caused it, the next question is, what's your plan to deal with it? Yeah, Mike, what are you going to do? I... I don't know. Good thing for me. My new friends did. Will and Jean will help me return to everyday normalcy. How does it look? Clean like the whistle, Michelangelo. The two will help me find my strengths. How does it look? It's a fine fit for an emerald warrior, Michelangelo. In Trimagon, no one helped me to see. So tell me, Michelangelo, how does it look? The fire? I don't know. I can't see it, no one. And how do you know it is a fire? By the smell, I guess, and the sounds it's making, the heat. And if you were to reach out and touch it, I get burned. So, if you remember it's a mount to Memora, its sultry voice, and its dangerous caress, do you not also remember its brilliant face? I... Yeah, I do. It's so bright, so beautiful. Yes, even when your eyes fail us, Things we have seen do not change. What must change, however, is how we see them with failing eyes. Our senses are like a kingdom, Michelangelo. When they are divided, we fall. But when they are united in harmony, the entire world reveals itself to us. <laughs> Chabagan, no one was right. The war began to reveal itself to me. Excellent. Day by day. Not an easy task, deflecting the strike from the brave Bator. Tell us, how you were brave to do so, Michelangelo? I heard his boots scrape over the pedals. Felt the air change when he swung. It smelled like today's breakfast is coming up from his mouth when he shouted. Ha ha! Breath of Bato! Month by month? I don't know, Bato. I don't think this is such a good idea. Don't think, Michelangelo. Just do. Everything became clear. What do you think now, Emerald Warrior? I think the horse is probably hating me. But I love it! In the dark, I found a new way of life. A new clan. A new family. The heat is beautiful. Hanjiro? Huh, yes. So pretty, Michelangelo. But sadly, like my other family, this new one had the same old problem. An unrelated enemy. What has the Noan told you of an other color hoy, Michelangelo? 
Death Worm? Yes, him. He said Death Worms, an old enemy of the tribe. That a lot of bloods has been shed fighting him and his thugs. Yes, our tribe was once much bigger, but even with our numbers were greater. We maintained the traditional way of life, peaceful. But when Olagoy, Hokoi, appeared, that peace was broken. Our numbers diminished. The girl who helps you, Jewel. Her mother and her father were killed by Deathworm's minions. He claims to be descended from the Jinchis Khan, wielding full military authority. As such, whatever he goes. Is it true that he's related to Jinchis Khan? True or not, he believes it. And he's pursued an army of. How did you describe them? Thugs, to believe it as well. They move back and forth across the continents, like the old Mongol hordes of old. This is why our tribe continues to migrate as much as possible to invade further decimation. But that is not to say we haven't inflicted damage on our enemy over the years. We may be peaceful, but we are not toothless. These seized weapons are proof of enemies fallen. Oil and gunpowder? I can smell what was in the box, even before Pato opened it. My brother Raph always called guns wimp weapons. He wasn't wrong. But there was something else. A burning electric smell. Like the kind that used to always be in my brother Donnie's lab. You mind if I give these babies a ribatol? From the moment I held them in my hands, humming with strange energy, it was like the top for one meant for me. I don't understand, Michelangelo. Why cover your eyes with cloth? I guess it just feels more natural to fight this way. Besides, more fate, more destiny. Who needs eyes to see? <laughs> more blind luck. Wherever it was, I had a powerful new weapon in my arsenal. God, I love these things. Thanks to Death Worm. Okay, time for my swim. Let's go. For nearly two years, I've been using my ears, nose, mouth, and fingers to see. It had became second nature to me. But constantly waiting on such stimuli to function can be overwhelming. Who is our soul to lay, Michael Angel? Aristotle. He was a really old, really smart guy. Kinda like Chumagon no one. Sometimes I just needed silence. Of course, taking a break from one family usually meant spending time with another. Gotta admit, you're getting good with those Tampa, Mikey. Just shows how constant training pays off. I'm pretty sure those things have localized electromagnetic pulse capabilities too. We're testing it out at least. A lot of good AMP is gonna do against horses and goats, Don. Just saying. Wait, do you guys hear that? I felt something. Is that freaking bullets? And in one silent moment, <laughs> the piece was broken. There it is. Told you it was in the water. Smell. Blood. Jiro! Michael! Jiro! Ah! Here it comes. Guns cocking, firing. I heard it. I smell it. I felt it. 
Quit screwing around. Everything went blindingly bright. And tased the damn thing. <laughs> and suddenly, my... My eyes! Quiet, freak! Gah! Kill or be killed. Okay, forget this. They're taking way too long. What the? Yeah! Dead. Owie. These paintballs really sting. Nice going, Ono. You were supposed to have our backs. Cool it, Moa. I'll handle this. You other kids grab the Sinjas and get cleaned up. We're done training today. Aw, this one lost his head. It's only a mannequin, Odie. Still, poor guy. Oh, brother. You okay? I... I guess so. Mo was right. Your job was rear security. You were easy kills when you blew your cover. But if you stay in position... We still be alive. Well, you would have had a fighting chance at least. It's just... It felt like the others were going too slow. And I just figured... I could get us inside quicker to stop the bad guys and save the hostage. Instead, the bad guys stopped you. Listen, I know it's hard to stay out of action, kid. But there, done that. Back when we were raiding Roosevelt Island to fight Stopman, I saw Master Michelangelo was in trouble. So, I broke from his plan to help him out. I saved him. told me something I never forget. I thought I told you to stay put. You did. I didn't. Terrible discipline. Excellent initiative. Don't do it again. Understand? Yes, Sensei. But I didn't understand. Not at first. But after a while, I realized what he meant. Even though I saved him, I couldn't put the other resistance soldiers in danger. I was supposed to be leading and protecting them. And I totally lucked out that none of them got killed. And I took off to help Sensei. You're our best fighter, Ono. You've been a natural since you were little. And you're brave like hell. But you gotta learn how to be a better teammate. Your brother and sisters were handling things on their end. Moa and Odin took out the Sinjas. And Yi was gonna get the door open. She's a whiz with her gadgets. Counting on you to have their sixes. And by not trusting them to do their jobs, and by not doing yours, you let the entire team down, including yourself. Master Splinter talks about sacrifice a lot in this journal. And I think that's what it takes to be a good teammate and a good leader. Especially when you're the best at what you do. Learning how to sacrifice your ego, knowing when to lead from the front, to let the others take the lead. Understand? Yes, Sensei. Good. Now let's go with the rest of our team. And 
don't forget the hostage. We don't want Odin getting too worried about her. So it's come to this, my friends! After nearly three years of non-stop bloodshed inside these damn cages. The grand finale! After all, the carnage. The fight to end of all fights! A battle royale for the ages! After all the death. Only two warriors remain! Surviving all that, how can I allow myself? The total titan, last of the monsters. To kill my only friend, my blood brother. And the spectacular Shaka, heroic human champion. You know the stakes, lots and losses. Freedom for the victor, death for the loser. Kill. Or be killed! How can I not? I lost so much more than I can handle. It's time, Michelangelo. We must see this through. My real brothers. My father. My closest friends. My precious little heart sister. But I've made my choice. Too late. Stop now. Too late. Story of my life. Too late for Graf. Too late for Leo, Casey Jones, April O'Neil, the Fugitoid, Donnie, Master Splinter. escape the tragedies that plagued me. I was too late to get away. There were always more trouble waiting for me. For nine years. No matter how far I ran. No matter where I ran to. The mountains. The sea. The wastelands. The troubles found me. And for all that time, the troubles the same name. Death Worm. A name without a face. Relentless. Haunting. Like a ghost in the dark. Well, that was awful. That poor little girl. You let them get the jump on you, Mike. You know better than that. No kidding. Rookie mistake, bro. Shut up. Please, just... Shut up. For a long while, all I had to keep me company were... The sounds of wheels turning, engines rumbling. The darkness... And my failures. By the time... Thought. I was thirsty and too weak to put up a fight. You, out. Not that I had any fight left in me. Now! I figured it was just a matter of time until the bastards were gonna kill me. And once again, like all those years ago, in Hakido Mountains, I was ready to die. Well, you're quite the specimen, aren't you? A dessert tortoise, if I ever saw one. Couldn't have been more wrong on both counts. I thought there'd be no more surprises for me when I came to your kind. This grant to be mistaken sometimes, eh? My name is Abigail Finn. That's Boss Finn to you, freak. 
Aye, I'm the boss here. That's sure. Welcome to my training facilities. And don't let the sandy beach and baby blue waters fool you. But here, there'll be monsters. Present company included, you manly green beast. Get that thing cleaned up and chip, boys. I want it properly secured and smelling like a rose. Before we commence with the dirty work. Dirty work? It won't be long before I find out what she meant. Only after, I was yoked. Microbomb freak. Right next to your crowbar artery. Remotely activated. So if you're thinking about running, think again. It'll be a short run, I promise. Insult. Ah! What's the matter? Thought you turtles love water. Now get some beauty sleep. <clears throat> You're gonna need it. And then... Look to the monsters. Monsters. Do me for the grinder. Don't look so tough. Like me. Shiro. I'm so sorry. You be advanced, bro. Any weakness you show now will not be forgotten in the cage. You should have to ignore him. Isn't this the cage? No, this is home. And where we train in the cage, we fight. Get my mouth shut. I'm done fighting. Then I suppose you're done living, because the only reason you're still breathing now is so that you can fight later. And you would not have been brought to this place where you're not a fighter. Which means you have this chance. Sit there and give up. I'm gonna save myself so much more pain to come. Or stand up and fight. Instead, noble choice. I am called Shaka. Michelangelo. I need a friend. Well, Michelangelo, unlike the boss Finn and her lackeys, allow me to give you a proper welcome to your new home. My new home turned out to be somewhere in Kazakhstan. An old beach resort converting into some kind of twisted gladiator training camp. Our day is full of fat, as you can see. Boss Finn has separated into two groups. Humans and other. Mutants. Pardon? It's what we were called things like me. Ah, understood. And by your accent, I reckon you're American too. How'd you end up here, bro? Long story. What were you saying about cage fighting? It's why we're all prisoners here. Forced to fight one to the death for sport and profit. Forced how? By way of those damn micro explosives they tagged all of us with. But the only way out of this hellhole is by winning Boss Finn's tournament. You lose in the cage, you die. Refuse to fight in the cage, you die. From the looks of things, I'm guessing Boss Finn isn't the real boss of all of this. You know of Deathworm? After more than nine years of dealing with the only of his goons, I'm starting to wonder if he actually exists. But yeah, you can say I know him. No Deathworm exists, friend. But not for long. If I had my way. His way, he explained, was to fight. A former professional, mixed martial arts expert, now a South African Shaka told me he'd been a fighter all of his life. And a winner. He was the next favorite to be the world's next champ. Until Deathworm Stugs kidnapped him one night. After a bow in Korea. They caught him off guard, 
and exhausted after the five hard rounds he just fought inside the arena. Like me, he was brought to place to be re-rated, microchipped, nearly drowned, and thrown inside the vents with no idea what the hell was going on. Shaka said he immediately began looking for a way out and escape. But then, we got a runner! Then let's hit the brakes. <laughs> Shaka understood what those microchips were for. Which meant escape wasn't an option. Believe me, that one chance made sense. Survive long enough to be freed. Or die trying. Wait. Freed? How? The cage fight tournament. Names are randomly drawn. Humans fight humans. And mutants, as you call yourself, fight mutants. Single elimination. And phases on elimination, right? Yeah. Die fighting or die by remote detonation. We live and train here. But not for much longer. Boss Finn runs a traveling tournament. Rumor is, well, begin moving west soon. With the final fight in Ukraine. Last human versus the last mutant. Battling for the big prize. Freedom? Exactly. And freedom for me means I can hunt down and kill the real enemy. Death form. Makes the choice to fight or die a little easier, doesn't it, bruh? Easier? Not the word I would have used. An honor check? That's what this is? You've made oaths. You have decided if you have the heart to keep them. It's more like the ultimate catch-22 if you ask me. I mean, you're damned if you do and damned. If you don't, Mikey, you guys always overcomplicate things. It ain't about honor. It ain't about getting damned. Sometimes you just gotta do what you gotta do. Simple as that. And so, I did. For two years, as Boss Finn's gladiator circus traveled west, I fought. I killed. survive. Simple as that. It was the same for Shaka. And as our individual kill list grew, we talked about our past. I told him about my ninja family. He told me about his swallowly history. It's why Boss Finn dresses me up like some kind of ancient African warrior in the cage. Ups the entertainment value, she says. Entertainment. Right. We told each other everything we lost. So, your path for revenge to this scum Hirodu runs through the death worm because of a promise you made? Something like that. Though things have gotten way more personal with death worm over the last few years. I know the feeling. But I only lost a career and maybe some prize money to go with it when they stole me into this mad tournament. But your entire family and all your friends, much as I want my pound of flesh, I don't want to be the one who stops you from getting yours, bro. And we talked about the future. Makes having you kill you tomorrow way more complicated. I know the feeling. But we made our choice. Yeah. I hate this, Shaka. You're not alone, my friend. And the future is now. You <clears throat> her boss Finn. Bruh. Kill. <clears throat> or be killed. And if these skullies want to show. 
Let's give him one. Betsy, get those bets in writing quick, laddies and blokes. We got us a real Donny Brook here. Please, I can't do this. You won't have to, bro. Just promise me one thing. When you get your pound of flesh, get some for me, too. What the? Shaka, why? Just making a noble choice, my friend. Kill the bastard! Money back. Let me go. Let go of him. Money, He's gonna turn this into a white riot. Parker, get your shocker lads in the cage. It appears our monster got some fight in him yet. Disqualification. You call this disqualification? I call it... EXECUTION! Come on, then! You want your money's worth? Yeah! I'll give you your money's worth. All of you! You know the rules. Kill or be... Yeah! Killed? Wait, what'd you say? I said Mikey couldn't got himself killed, dummy. Well, you of all people saying that with a straight face boggles the mind. Doesn't mean Raph is wrong, Donnie. Mikey's lucky he's not dead after losing his discipline like that. And after he took out all of them other mutants just to get here. More like bad science experiments and... Your radiation victims than mutants, Raph. But, yeah, it was almost all for nothing. Especially when he's close to honoring his oath to Master Yip. Discipline. Honor. Luck. Oaths! You three are really something, you know that? Standing here, bitching and moaning about things? I don't think any of you idiots ever understand. But I understand now. I know the truth. And all that stuff you're always harping about. Honor, redemption, whatever it is. Just an end. And there's only ever been one means to the end. One path. Revenge. <laughs> ah, there he is. I was starting to fret the Shocker lads had juiced you up a bit too much this time. Now, just lie still so I can back off. <laughs> now, mate, the good doctors are only trying to shut off those wee bombs you got lurking in your throat. Your promised reward for being our newest champ. Not the finest championship about we've ever thrown, mind ya. About as win a win, and a promise is a promise. Fine. Do it. <laughs> All done. Now, see there? Easy as pie. And Parker, here's all his clothes, weapons, and all other odds and ends that arrived with you. 
when you first joined our little traveling circus. Bloody his heavy bag is old junk what it is. Now, don't tell me where you're worried anything missing. As if we were a band of petty thefts. That hurt your feelings as bad as it is, does mine, Parker. It's just my boss, Finn. If I had any. Well, Parker's cold black heart. Notwithstanding, once you're all dressed, you're free to go. Where you wish, do what you want. What? Bollocks! <laughs> what I want is your boss. My boss? Death Worm, take me to him. Did you hear that, lads? Our champ wants to go at none other than Death Worm himself. As if the big man was at our beck and call to deliver such a mad challenge. Enough. Just tell me where he is, or I'll kill you. Aye, you just might, boyo. But then the lads here will kill you, and then you will be dead. As your mate Shaka, making his sacrifice a bloody waste, wouldn't you say? Appears he martyred himself to let you go off and be the hero. Be a real shame to let him down. I. But seeing as you've a death wish, and since I'm the supporting kind, I'll let you know where to find him. He's busy spreading his special skills all across Europe these days. I'm told. We've couriers who took the money we make from these tournaments to him. And the last delivery made its way as far as old Italy. That's where you'll find your death one. That's where you'll find your end. Why'd you let Mickey Beast go, Boss Finn? We could have killed him as soon as he let you loose. Oh, but we have killed him, Parker. The journey I've sent him on. He's good as dead. Without looking back, without a second thought, I left Yurikin for Italy. Or rather, we left. And no matter how hard tried during my long trek. I couldn't shake my will into a of death. I prayed to failure. And they were with me every step of the way. Silently accusing. My brothers kept their mouths shut for the most part. And even when they got to yapping, I just ignored them. I was hearing the only that matter to me now, echoing over and over inside my head. Not any words my father ever said, or Master Yeba, or my brothers. At least, none they ever said out loud. The boss Finn did. She never left her words behind in the window. She said them like the truth they are. The only truth I've ever seen since as far back as I can remember. My family's truth. My truth. Kill. Or be killed. Whoa. Death worms hold up in the old Roman Colosseum? Mace kind of twisted sense if you think about it. And thinking's what we should be doing right now. That place is bound to be crawling with deathworm thugs. No way we could just waltz inside. What's the plan, Mikey? There you go with that we stuff again, Leo. There's only one plan. The same plan we've had for the last 15 years. You three stay around running your mouths. While I take care of business. 
I know my brothers mean well, but they're dead as doornails, which means they're no good to me right now. Me? I'm not dead, and I'm not a doornail. I'm a ninja. And if I expect to stay alive long enough to face death warm, I better get busy acting like one. Take yours too! Enough! That voice. Booming commanding. All of you, move aside! Mongolian. He's mine. Many deaths. Time to honor my oath. Time to end this. I'll kill you. He's big, strong. Can't let him get a hold of me. Keep him at his distance. On his heels. What? Too easy. Yes, it was. How many times did I tell Kyung that charging in like a feral beast would be the end of him? Uh, who? Countless times. No way. Your death worm? Yes, that is what I am called. Algoy, Kahoy, in my birth tongue. And do not be deceived by appearances. It is a name well earned. <laughs> and I know who you are, stupid Mike. Or rather, what you are. One of those wasteland monsters. God! Real stupid. Get the big, clumsy oaf at a distance. Escape Boss Finn's traveling circus, did you? Didn't escape. But let this sneaky twerp right in. I'm champion. Champion, you say? You survived all that, earned your freedom, and choose to come here? Why would you do something so foolish? Revenge for Shaka, for Jiro. Head spinning, legs shaking. For Hakido. Hakido? So that was you? I do valiantly recall these idiots I sent up to the mountains. The few who survived your slaughter, claiming they'd been attacked by a green monster. I believe they even pursue you for a time. And now, here you are after all these years, 
seeking vengeance for something I barely remember. Amazing. And quite frankly ridiculous. I cannot even begin to comprehend the concept of revenge for the dead, for family, for anything. What value is there in it? I consider all life as I would gain of sand. Unless it serves my purpose, it is worth nothing. And if a life is worthless, that leaves only death. Too much blood in my eyes. Can't see. Senses are like a kingdom like a ritual. When they are divided, we fall. But when they are united in harmony, the entire world reveals itself to us. And here in my world, I am that death. Hmm. Not so weakened as you appeared. Well, as a great man once told me, don't mistake softness for weakness. Now, what were you saying about sand? Kill that... No. Do not interfere. Time to show this monster who the real champion is. Yeah! He's fast. <clears throat> Way stronger than he looks. There is no long line of fools who have attempted what you have hoped to accomplish today. I am here. They are not. Know the channel, Mike. Stay focused. Remember your training. How can you master what you put in your hands if you don't first master your hands? And now, you join them. No. Not today. Not ever. Remember these, no? Let me remind you. Your boss is right. He is death. Anyone want to follow the leader? No? Smart choice. Nice coat. Deathworm is dead. For Master Yeb. For Chiro. For Shaka. It's over. But I'm not finished. Time to go. Stopping. No mercy. Naruto. No peace. You're next. A lot has changed since you were all just tiny turtles. Until now, you've all grown so much. Not just your size, but your skills too. My sensei, Master Michelangelo, traveled across the world to save New York. Along the way, he learned how important it is for a ninja to master multiple fighting forms and weapons. I tried my best to teach you everything he taught me before he died. And all that stuff I learned from Master Splinter's journal since. To show you how to be the best ninjas you can be. We've always told you each of your names means one. Delivered from different languages. Michelangelo only counted on his journey. And 
constant reminder that even though you are four, you are also one. One team, one family. And number one in the heart, always. More than anything, I've wished this day would never come. But sadly, it has. Now, together, it's our turn to help protect the city, the same way my sensei's family and my mom and dad once did. Time to take all we trained so hard and long to achieve underground. Up to the streets. <laughs>